The user interface of Stan consists of several windows. If you want to change the size of these windows, drag the borders to the desired position. If you work with a notebook that has a small screen, the drawing area here in the middle can be pretty small. In order to get the biggest drawing area possible, it might be necessary to hide the windows on the left hand side and or the right hand side. For example, if you want to hide the windows on the left hand side, go to the title bar of the window and click the pin button. If we also want to hide the second window, again click the pin button. You now see on the left hand side of the user interface two tabs that symbolize the two windows. As soon as you move your mouse pointer over one of these tabs, you see the window reappearing. If you want to reset the screen to the default settings, go to the menu bar, choose Extras, Options, and then click the Reset to Default button. The most important window is the drawing area here in the middle. You can use this area to model a system in a graphical way. For this purpose, you find on the left hand side the Shapes window where a bunch of predefined objects can be found. If you want to enter or insert a process, click the process icon and then click on the drawing area again. You see, a process with a predefined size has been inserted. If you are not satisfied with the position of the process, you can drag it to a different one. If you want to change the size of the process, use the green squares on its perimeter to change it. If you want to insert an additional process, you can again click the process icon in the shapes window and then select the position in the drawing area, or you can press the spacebar of your keyboard to recall the last input operation. That means if you press the spacebar, you see that the process icon is highlighted again and you can insert the process immediately, immediately by clicking on the drawing area. To move multiple objects at once, you have to erect a frame around them in this way. And all of the objects that are inside of this frame or that are crossed by the border of the frame are highlighted afterwards. Now select one of these objects and drag it to the new position. You see that the rest of the objects are also moved. Each of these processes has so-called anchor points on its perimeter where you can connect flows to. These anchor points are situated at the intersection points of the grid in the background, not on the corners of the processes. So if you want to insert an internal flow that per definition connects two processes, select the internal flow symbol in the shapes window, go to one of these anchor points, you don't have to hit it exactly, uh, just in the surrounding, click the left mouse button, drag the mouse to the anchor point or to the process that you want to connect it to and then release the mouse button. You see that a flow has been inserted that connects these two processes. If you want to insert an import flow, you have to go to the shapes window and select the import flow symbol. Then you go to one of these grid points, you don't have to hit it exactly again, click the left mouse button, keep the mouse button pressed and release it in the surrounding of one of the anchor points of the process where you want to connect the flow to. The same is valid for inserting an export flow. Again, select the export flow symbol, go into the surrounding of one of the anchor points where you want the flow to start from, click the left mouse button, choose the end point of the flow and release the mouse button. You see an, an export flow has been inserted. To finish the model I now want to connect 
process 1 to process 3 by an internal flow. So I select again the internal flow symbol. I select the anchor point on process 1 where I want the flow to start and then the anchor point on process 3 where I want the flow to end. You see now that a straight line or a straight arrow has been inserted that connects process 1 to process 3. If you do not want to have a straight line, you can select the green dot in the middle and drag it to a position on the drawing area to create perpendicular flows. To finish the model, I also want to insert an additional internal flow that connects process 2 to process 3. I select the internal flow symbol in the shapes window, go to the anchor point of process 2 where I want the flow to start and connect it to the anchor point on flow process 3 where I want the flow to end. Again, I can use the green dot in the middle to um, create rectangular flows. So far we have been able to model our system by only using two windows, the drawing area and the shapes window. But now we have to focus on a third window called the properties window on the right hand side. The idea, the idea of the properties window is that as soon as you select an object in the drawing area, the properties of this object, of this object will be displayed in the properties window. That means when you select a process, you will see here the process properties. When you select the flow, you will see the flow properties. Let's focus first on the process properties. When you have selected a process, you see on the right hand side the process properties. Here you can choose which type of process uh, the selected process should be. For example, if you know that the selected process contains a stock where material is accumulated, set the tick here. As soon as you have done this, you see that on the drawing area, pro the selected process gets an internal rectangle that symbolizes a stock. If you have more information what is going on inside of a process, but you do not want to show it on this level, you can create subsystems. For example, if you know what is going on inside of process 1, you can highlight process 1, you select it, then go to the process property windows and set a tick at subsystem. As soon as you have done this, you see that process 1 gets blue border, signifying that this is a subsystem. When you double click on this subsystem, a new window will open where all those flows that are entering and leaving the subsystem on the level above, here, flow 2, flow 1 and flow 4, are already existing. What you can do here is to model in more detail what is going on by additionally inserting processes and flows. For example, like this, connect them by an internal flow and I connect this import flow and the export flows to these processes. So my internal model of the subsystem could look like this. All objects that are inserted in your models have predefined names. For example, flow 1, flow 2, process 1, process 2 and so on. I would highly recommend to rename those objects as soon as possible in order to identify them correctly. For example, flow 2 could be an input flow consisting of raw materials. If you want to change the name, select this flow. And everything that you can do with this flow is displayed now in the flow properties window. So here you can change the short symbol to RM, for example, raw materials, and the name to raw materials. I finished now renaming all of the objects in my model, all the flows and the processes. You see that raw materials are imported into my system and I've changed the name of this process to processing. These raw materials are processed to form intermediate products uh, that are um, used to form a product in production. In both of these processes, waste is generated that is going to landfill. Now that we have finished our graphical model, it's time to enter data. 
I want, for example, enter the amount of material that is entering my system as raw material. So I select Flow Raw Materials, and then I go to the window Flow Properties to tap Values. And here you see the possibility to enter mass flows, volume flows, and density. I want to enter mass flow uh, of 100 tons per year. So I'm entering, I'm entering 100 and I do not have to change the unit because it's already tons per year. So I click uh, enter and as soon as I've done this you see that here in the diagram the number that I've entered is displayed as Senki arrow. That means that the width of this arrow is proportional to the mass that is transported. We also know that a certain amount of material is going as intermediate product into production. Let's say this is 90,000 kilograms per year. So I'm entering here 90,000 kilograms per year. I can enter the unit directly after the number or I can choose the unit from the unit button behind. As soon as I've enter, entered the data, you see that it is again displayed here in my diagram as Senki arrow. You see that these 90,000 kilograms per year have been translated or transformed into tons per year uh, in order to have the same unit in my diagram. Um, if you want to know which unit is used in your diagram, the easiest way is to enter a legend. The legend you can choose from the shapes window and then click somewhere in the drawing area to enter the legend and you see that all your flows are in tons per year and the stocks if um, available, available in tons. As soon as you have entered data you can try to perform a calculation and then we'll try to calculate as many of the unknown quantities as possible. A calculation can be started by using the calculator symbol in the toolbar up here and if you press this calculator button you can ignore this warning this is because there is no description of the system available yet, yet and click yes. And you see from the given information from 100 tons entering your system and 90 tons going uh, out of processing as intermediate products, it could be calculated that waste 1 is 10 tons per year. But the rest of the flows could not be calculated because there was not enough data given. Let's assume that we have information about how much material is leaving production as waste as a ratio, let's say so called a so-called transfer coefficient. You can enter this type of information uh, by double clicking on a normal process. And what you see here is the so-called process window. And here you have the possibility to enter transfer coefficients um, in this transfer coefficient matrix. You see we have here the sum of inputs and here a single input if there were more than one input, you would see here a list of all the inputs. But we want to state that from all the sum of inputs that are entering uh, production, only let's say 5%, 0 0.05, is leaving production as waste. And we confirm this with OK. If we repeat the calculation now, you will see that all of the flows of my system could be calculated from this given transfer coefficient and the two waste flows that are going to the land field are summed up and this plus sign means that there is an increase of material in landfill in the amount of 40.5 40, 40 tons per year. Our material flow analysis is finished now. We have all the numbers of flows and stocks on the layer of goods of our model and what is left now is to get a nice picture of these graphs and numbers that we have entered and for that there are special features that you can use for example you can um, assign colors to processes and flows so if you select one of these flows 
and inside of the flow properties window we have more than two tabs down here but they are not displayed so I can move the border for example and then you see you have here tab shape and if you click this tab you see that you can choose here the color of your flow for example green uh, what else can you do? You can say, okay, I'm not satisfied with the, with the alignment of my label and my oval shape here. I want to have it vertical. So you click this shape and you can switch here from um, labeling horizontal to vertical and you can do the same with the oval size. So it looks like this. And the last thing that you can do is to enter a system boundary. So you choose this symbol here from the shapes window and click somewhere on the drawing area. And you see that automatically there is a system boundary inserted where you see the amount of import, sum of imports, the sum of exports and the change in stock that you have in your system. And additionally you see the description of your system and you have a nice legend down here so now we have a really nice picture that we could export as a graph or that we could print. Uh, be careful when you export a graph or you print it everything that is shown on this drawing area will be exported or printed so I would recommend to switch all the grid for example like this and when you zoom out of your drawing area see that the drawing area is larger than the object that we have created now so you can choose the small gray bars on the end of the rulers to make your drawing area smaller and then this is exactly what is exported or printed afterwards